I don't think I can do this without the box. I'm confused. Hey, everybody. Um, a lot's been going on, uh, as you know, with the uh, lending markets in the last few months. Um, we had discussed briefly a couple months ago the concept of collateralized debt obligations and the reason why the credit markets were in such a crunch being that the secondary markets, Wall Street and the institutional investors, were shying away from purchasing these packaged uh, securities that were backed by mortgages, especially in the wake of the subprime meltdown. So in the last two months, um, we've seen a little bit of institutional money come back into the markets, purchasing some of these, but not a lot, and definitely a deficit in the area of second mortgages. Um, even the collateralized debt obligations that are now being picked up by the institutional investors for first mortgages, we're seeing a real lag in, in the money coming back in to purchase second mortgages. What that means in terms of an effect to you if you're trying to purchase a property or um, if you're a realtor to your clients is that we're seeing a lot of trouble in getting piggyback second mortgages for purchases. So I don't know about all of you, when I purchased my home a year and a half ago, I had a first mortgage and a second mortgage right out the door, all the way up to 100% financing. Um, you're not seeing that really happening right now. Um, you're also seeing a lot of stagnation in the cash out um, refinance market. So for example, if you have an arm and you're trying to get out of it, and you're not trying to get any cash out of your home, you're still pretty much okay. Um, if you're trying to refinance your home and take cash out, uh, we're running into some problems with banks uh, picking up uh, those kind of products. Um, another thing that's going on right now that's a little bit interesting, and I'm not really sure where this is going to go, is that there's been a bill introduced into the National Congress that's similar to the bill that was passed in the Nevada Congress that went into effect on October 1st of this year. Um, briefly, what that did in Nevada is it really tightened the guidelines for stated income loans in this state. Um, we've since seen a transition to what's been called light dock loans, which is basically similar to stated, only you're having to provide bank statements for a year. So there is now a bill on the floor in Congress, in the House and the Senate, that's very similar to this one for Nevada. As of now, it has been substantially altered, so it's looking like it's not going to be as bad as the bill that passed in Nevada, if it gets through at all, um, which it probably will, um, but it's not going to have as stringent of, of the restrictions. But it will be interesting to see in the coming months what kind of effect that is going to have on the national market. Sean's going to get up here and talk in a second about the national outlook. I thought I was following him, so I was going to reference something that he said. But um, something that I think we're going to see moving forward is for markets that are on an upswing, that are looking like they're going to either recover or show appreciation in the next year, I don't think that the lending situation is going to be as much of a problem for those markets, for example, Cleveland, Cincinnati, Dallas. For markets like Las Vegas, California, Florida, where we're already in a downswing, I think that the credit situation that we're seeing here, especially in Nevada with the bill that was passed in our Congress, it's really going to continue to put down downward pressure on our prices. And so I'm, my outlook is more consistent with uh, the first person that Glenn was talking about in the crystal ball saying 18 months for Nevada to recover. I think that that's reasonable for the credit crisis as well. I do not think we're going to see institutional money flooding back into the secondary markets anytime in the near future. And I think that you can expect to see continuing uh, more strict guidelines for lending uh, at least through 2009. Um, really briefly, Standard & Poor's just had their yearly uh, conference for institutional bankers and mortgage bankers, and they came out of there with a quote. Um, one of the uh, directors, managing director of research for um, J.P. Morgan said that the credit markets are already in a recession, whether or not the general economy is. Um, I think that's pretty accurate. Whether or not the general economy will follow the credit markets into a recession uh, kind of remains to be seen. but. Uh, we should continue to see downward pressure from that over, over the next several months. And as the exposure for these major institutional banks becomes more known towards the end of the year, we need to watch for ramifications for that as well. Um, one of the major banks has $1.8 billion um, still exposed on collateralized debt obligations. And just to give you a, a Another um, number to reference that with, that's $1.8 billion they have exposed in CDOs that they've sold. They have $6.8 billion on their own warehouse lines. So that's what's happening is these major banks are filling up their warehouse lines with product that they can't sell and that they can't get rid of. And uh, how the credit market will react will determine on when and if they're able to get those off of their books. That's about it for right now.